Freedom Fighters is a 2003 third-person shooter video game for the PlayStation 2 GameCube, Xbox and Microsoft Windows. It was developed by IO Interactive and published by Electronic Arts. The game is set in an alternate history where the Soviet Union has invaded and occupied New York City. The player takes the role of Christopher Stone, a plumber turned resistance movement leader, fighting against the invaders. Gameplay Freedom Fighters is a third-person shooter, in which the player navigates through the streets of New York with a controllable squad of teammates while fighting the occupying Soviet forces. The player gains charisma points by performing various deeds, such as capturing a base or destroying enemy supplies. The more charisma gained, the more squad mates the character can recruit, up to a maximum of 12. The player can direct recruits by giving them simple orders such as follow, attack, and defend. Topic: <inaudible> Multiplayer. The console version's multiplayer revolves around securing flags and bunkers. The flag is usually in the center of the map. Bunkers are positioned around the map and spawn either Soviet soldiers or American freedom fighters. A game can host up to four players via split screen who may choose between the Soviet and American sides. Each side has a different set of weapons which the players can switch during battle. The player's charisma meters are set to eight, so each player can have a maximum of eight soldiers under their command. However, if it is a four-player battle, each player can control a maximum of four soldiers. The PC version does not support multiplayer. Topic. Plot The Soviet Union became a world superpower by dropping the first atomic bomb on Berlin, ending World War II, and propping up communist states throughout the globe which begin to surround the U.S. in the present day. New York plumbing brothers Chris and Troy Stone travel to meet with their next client, an activist named Isabella Angelina, only to find her apartment abandoned. The Soviet Union launches a surprise invasion of New York City and suddenly Soviet soldiers, led by General Tatarin, seize Troy. Amidst the attack, Chris escapes to the streets, encountering a man named Mr. Jones and resistance member Phil Bagston. After rescuing Isabella from a police station and Troy from a post office, the group retreats to the sewers and sets up a base of operations as New York is lost, with the media now being controlled by the Soviet Union. Months later, Chris, Phil, and Isabella sabotage key Soviet facilities and reclaim areas within the city, building up a resistance group of New York citizens and disillusioned Soviet soldiers. Chris becomes known as the Freedom Phantom within the Soviet-controlled media network, SAFN. Troy is captured by Soviet troops and tortured for information. Forced into issuing a public statement aimed at the resistance to cease their actions, he breaks from the prepared text and urges Chris to continue fighting. In response, General Tatarin has Troy taken to Fort J and executes him personally. Mr. Jones suggests assassinating Tatarin in retaliation. Chris succeeds, but returns to find Isabella missing and the resistance base occupied by the Soviet army. The operation was orchestrated by Mr. Jones who reveals himself to be KGB agent Colonel Bulba. Chris escapes with Phil and others to a new underground area while SAFN reports on the death of Tatarin, Colonel Bulba's promotion to general, and the end of the resistance in New York. During the winter, Chris leads the resistance deeper into occupied New York, culminating with a major raid on SAFN studios. Chris uses the station to send a broadcast encouraging the city and beyond to rise up and bring an end to the Soviet occupation. A final assault on Governor's Island, consisting of massed resistance forces, is planned. After capturing Fort J and rescuing Isabella, New York is liberated for the time being as Chris and the group solemnly celebrate their victory. Chris knows the Soviets will not give up the occupied United States easily, but resolves to fight on as long as is necessary. Topic. Development. In 2002, EA Games officially announced Freedom, the Battle for Liberty Island, which would later be renamed Freedom Fighters, at the Electronic Entertainment Expo. The concept for the game originally involved a turn-based strategic mode as a major element of gameplay. 
The game was developed by IO Interactive, using the 3D engine Glacier. This engine makes use of the OpenGL and DirectX graphic APIs. Freedom Fighters was released by EA Games in the US on October 1, 2003, a full week after the UK release. An EA spokesperson stated that retailers in the US had requested the delay. The game is one of the few developed by IO Interactive that was not published by Eidos Interactive. Topic: Audio The Freedom Fighters original soundtrack was composed by Jesper Kidd and released on September 29, 2003 by Something Else Music Works and Nano Studios. It was GameSpot's Best Game Soundtrack of the Year 2003 and Game Reactor's Best Game Music of the Year. Tracks 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 14 and 16 are performed by the Hungarian Radio Choir. The music has grand, Soviet-style choral arrangements, and the synth parts have been described as Vangelis on steroids. Kidd researched Russian music and musical scales prior to composing the soundtrack, citing Soviet history and the Cold War as major influences. Kidd composed the score in Manhattan shortly after the September 11 attacks. Reception Freedom Fighters received generally positive reviews, with an average scoring of 81.5, 100 overall by Metacritic and 82.69% overall by GameRankings. It was praised for having an excellent AI for squad tactics, which served to enhance the sense of immersion in the extremely detailed environments and maintain the illusion of working with a team. The game's sound quality was also of note, both for the realistic combat noises and the game's Russian-influenced music, which adds a perfect level of drama to the proceedings." Critics noted that while the game does a marvelous job of creating a realistic environment, the story was lacking in substance and fairly predictable, and while the squad AI is good, the enemy AI was lacking. Another source of criticism was the game's length. The game can be cleared relatively quickly, but offers little replay value. According to Jeff Gerstmann of GameSpot, the only real problem with Freedom Fighters is that there simply isn't enough of it. Topic sequel On April 6, 2004 Eidos UK revealed plans for the sequel. Eidos announced it would distribute the sequel in the latter part of 2005. However, IO Interactive announced development of a new game, Kane and Lynch, Dead Men, casting the future of a Freedom Fighters sequel in doubt. In 2010, when asked about a potential sequel, Kane and Lynch 2, Dog Days director Karsten Lund refused to comment. In 2011, IO Interactive's official Twitter account tweeted that Freedom Fighters 2 is definitely something a lot of us are interested in doing. In 2017, IO Interactive split from Square Enix and took with them the rights to Freedom Fighters since it was published before the Eidos buyout. 